Time to pack up our bags without hopefully leaving anything behind. Because on January 6th, we are finally going to fly out of the country. The land borders between Canada and the US were still closed, but we are allowed to fly into the US. Well, first up, it was leaving Corey's parents' place and crossing from Quebec to Ontario, which technically we're not allowed to travel in the car with someone else from a different address. So I was a little worried that they'd pull us over, find us or something, but the streets were really quiet and no cops, no traffic. Nobody. Wow. The airport is closed. <laughs> We arrived at the Ottawa airport and everything went really smooth. Actually, I even thought that the airport was closed because there was like nobody. Makes it uh, easier to talk to people and get help. <laughs> it's so crazy. We're in Ottawa airport and we're flying back to our boat. So hopefully by the end of the day we're going to be reunited. So far so good. I don't want to jinx myself, but we have all three boarding passes. We don't only have one, so hopefully we're not going to get stranded in Washington like last time. But we've got a clear custom in Toronto, so we'll see how that goes. So the day before, I checked in online with Air Canada and I only received one boarding pass. So one out of three flights. So I was really stressed that we'd get stranded. But the lady over there helped us out. Oh, that was such a relief. I was really excited to have all three of those. And got on the first flight. Everything went smooth. In Canada, when it's really cold, like this January, the planes get de-iced like this. landed in Toronto and we only had an hour to go through another inspection and customs. Flight number two! The inspection went good. I mean, they're worried about weed because we're Canadian, but everything went good. And going through customs, that was, that was stressful. We got someone that just kept asking us a bunch of questions. And I guess it's a little weird with our sellable story and all that, so kept asking even more and more and more questions and I'm thinking to myself we only have an hour to go through all of this board our flight before they just abandon us in Toronto so please hurry up get stuff done but finally he did let us go so that was really good and after that to be honest it was just a lot of um, stress that was just lifted off my shoulders because well, I knew we were allowed in the US and we had all boarding passes so I was hoping nothing would go wrong, which it didn't. It was really good. And then we landed in uh, Washington and there was some crazy stuff happening at uh, the White House. So everyone was worried about us, but we were eating pizza and not really knowing what was going you on. Got there. Oh, I got, I think the best pizza. You make it yourself with like tons of unlimited toppings. I'm really excited because that's the first meal of the day and it's almost five o'clock. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so excited! It's like final stretch to Jacksonville. Third flight and 7.30 we should be there. Order the last flight. And then my sister picked us oh. up. <laughs> See? Who is that? Oh my gosh. I was so nervous when I was looking at the news in Washington. And we went out for beers and burgers. First meal in the US. That was exciting. First restaurant in forever. Because all the restaurants are closed in Canada. 
It feels kind of surreal being back in Florida after quite a few months spent in Canada. But oh, being here is such a relief. Like yesterday was just... Our travel day was just really stressful. There was a lot of different layers of things that we had to get across in order to be here. And to be honest, I wasn't too sure if we'd actually even make it in. So now we're here in Jacksonville at my sister and Sean and we're gonna enjoy the weekend with them. And then on Tuesday, our boat is gonna get moved to the work zone. So we're gonna be able to do some work, do some cleaning and get on the water hopefully shortly after and then sail over to the Bahamas. But there's quite a bit of work to be done prior to and eating of oranges. Well, we're heading to the boat for the first time since we left it in, um, geez, months ago now. So it'll be interesting. We're gonna see how it's held up, make sure there's no uh, hurricane damage or anything like that. And get ready because tomorrow we're pulling the boat or moving the boat to the work zone so we can actually work on it. So today we're just gonna clean up and get everything ready. Maybe remove all the solar panels and stuff and anything that will be in our way. It's right over there. We're about to get to Green Cove Springs, which is where we left our sailboat for four months during hurricane season. Thankfully, there wasn't any um, serious hurricanes that came in this area, so we shouldn't see too much damage, hopefully. But um, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm not excited right now. You know, I, I feel like I should be excited. I, I have been like nauseous for the last few days, and I, I just don't understand. Like, uh, Alex thinks it's stress, but I don't feel like I have stress, but Obviously there's something wrong with me and I'm pretty sure it's a mental thing. But yeah, I just I'm not I'm not excited even though I should be. And I think it's mostly because I'm I've got some sort of inner stress that I'm I'm not realizing where it's coming from or why I'm stressed because I mean I shouldn't be stressed. I'm we made it to the states. That was the big thing where I, what I was stressed about initially like crossing the border and everything or getting turned around at the border. That's what was stressful. There's nothing left to be stressed about, you know, but my body is still in like stress mode. And, but anyway, I'm sure things will get better as we start working on the boat and uh, I start to realize that we actually made it here. It's such a relief seeing it standing straight up and nothing broken. Yes! The key? I got the key. She got rusty while we were gone. I get a little bit of a mold, kind of a lot actually. Ugh. Well, we definitely got some work to do. First, we're uh, well. We used these things while we were gone. We had one of the, the large large buckets in there for a good couple months, and then Alex's sister brought this the second one in, and uh, I guess it must have helped. But it's certainly. Well, I mean, you just look at the outside of the boat and the gel coat is uh, molding. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh -oh. Comes off well. 
I kind of expected that the inside was going to be pretty bad, but I honestly, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. They always say you should have aeration in your boat and stuff, but it's kind of hard to leave your boat for four months during hurricane season while leaving it, you know, open to the air. So uh, we basically closed it off. We didn't install any fans or anything, which is what I was going to do initially. I was like, okay, whatever, we'll just clean it up when we get here. But now we have a lot, a lot of cleaning to do. I don't think a lot of it's black mold, which is nice, but there's definitely some moldiness. So right now we're gonna take all the cushions, basically any fabric out, which we talked about uh, before we left. We were actually talking about doing it and we never did, but now we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to remove all the fabric and basically wash everything because it's just gonna have this mildewy smell. So that's the first thing I think. And um, since I got a bit of a weak stomach, I think I'm gonna install some of the solar so we can get some power in the boat. and. Uh, Start getting things together. Oh, here's another cushion. And on a really good note, it looks like nobody actually stole anything out of the boat unless they did some selection picking. Because we were a little worried with Green Cove Spring Mar Marina because we heard a lot of uh, theft was happening a couple of years back. But the staff had told us everything had been kind of dealt with. And it seems like it's all good. The boat's there with. I think everything in. <laughs> okay, this guy has to go out. We'll try to attach it so that we've got some space. last season I'm trying to see if we have power but I don't think we do I remember uh, last time like on our last day our little uh, voltmeter here stopped working so I have to figure out why that stopped working but we were still getting power but now I don't think we're getting power all right since I was dumb and didn't bring my tester with me, my voltmeter, I am just hooking up the solar panel to see if I can trickle charge the battery at all and see if I can uh, pick up anything to s basically to find out if, what the voltage is at. I think the battery has died completely while we were gone. I don't understand how because our selector switch was set to off and we didn't have anything that could have been drawing power. But anyway, fun times. As you can see, our battery is completely dead. Well, we knew there was going to be some issues when we got here. I thought it was mostly going to be mold, but looks like our batteries are finished. They were down to like four volts and we're trickle charging them now with a solar panel outside at around, uh, I don't know, four amps or so and we'll see if we can get it back up. It's already at eight volts, so it's, it's coming up, but I really have my doubts that it's gonna hold voltage. It's just really a shame because we decided we were gonna just like make these batteries last just one more season. And then we we're looking, cause we we're looking to lithium as a alternative. Um, we wanna do a DIY uh, lithium project and add more to our bank. But we were like, oh, we could squeeze a little more out of our batteries and we come and they're pretty much finished. So obviously, um, if you know anything about batteries, uh, lead acid or AGM, they really don't like being discharged down to nothing. And uh, more often than not, if you do that, you're probably gonna destroy your batteries. So I really don't have much faith that these, are, these batteries are gonna be any good anymore, but we're gonna see. We're gonna try to revive them and see if we can get maybe another season, uh, season out of them. So I don't know if it's this thing that slowly trickle down the charger it's saying it's using 11 amps but there's nothing connected to our inverter right now so either this thing is messed up or our inverter is messed up but i have a feeling it's just this thing is reading wrong maybe it needs to be reset or something but yeah i mean it doesn't make any sense for us to be using anywhere from 10 to 15 amps and there's nothing connected nasty yeah this is disgusting Need some serious cleaning before we actually can sleep in here. This one nice thing is it's all just surface mold. 
That seems to be coming off pretty easy with no scrubbing. You just kind of wipe it away with a bit of that green work stuff. And it's good as new. So at least this part won't take so long. I'm a lot more worried about the batteries than I am about the mold now. So, quick little clean and check on it. And we're gonna head back to Jacksonville. Yeah. So we're getting some new batteries. Well, today is the day we get moved into the work zone. We got all our batteries ordered yesterday. Uh, I'm pretty actually stoked on what we got out of the deal. So hopefully we'll uh, be happy with them. They're cheap cells. They're the cheapest cells I think you can find online for like grade A cells. They're Eve cells. Um, there's some issues with those cells as far as like the threads being like fairly easy to strip So you got to be careful when you're tightening down the lugs and stuff but uh, really cheap 280 amp hours and we have With a BMS and a couple other things and it's gonna cost us less than a thousand so Significant amount more amp hours than say Battleborn or some of the other competitors uh, And all we got to do is slap the BMS on it ourselves. So it should be good. And today we're getting worked in, uh, moved into the work zone, so we're gonna try to get as much done as possible inside the boat uh, until they move us sometime this morning. Well, this is a little bit funny. Yesterday we were trying to figure out at what time we'd be moved and they're like, oh, it'll be late morning. And who knows, maybe we're not even gonna move you today because we're super busy. So we're like, okay, so we'll try to show up for late morning, which we're still like just mid-morning. And there she is. <laughs> Mid-morning, we're, we're here like, like an hour after they opened, so I don't see how they were even <laughs> able to get this here, but whatever, it's oh, here it's now. There. It's kind of annoying because we wanted to ask. They might not have been able to do it, but we can talk to them. Yeah, about, don't have a big kill, to be honest. We can talk to them about maybe <laughs> moving um, that brace back and putting... They already have so many braces here, I think that would support the weight, but we're just going to have to talk to them about what we can potentially do here. Well, we hooked up the charger, our shore power charger, now that we're here to our batteries. And I'm pretty sure our batteries are completely gone because you hook it up and it pumps 16 amps in it. It goes from unreadable voltage almost, you know, like 5 volts to uh, 14 pretty much instantly. And um, I mean, that's essentially telling me that there's, there's no it's not going to hold that power so i'm going to try to pump in some power it's putting in 16 amps right now and see if it holds it but i really have my doubts but it's okay because we got those other batteries coming well i thought our batteries might have died because it looked like our little um it's called a hall effect sensor it basically measures current and tells you how much power you're using uh, i thought maybe that was turning on and we we're losing power through that because it seems like when it gets lower in voltage it turns on but it's only a little light so it would have been very difficult for something like so small a little led to draw down our battery our, our 140 amp hour so much but uh, i realized looking at this when i tried to turn on our radio over there when we had it hooked up um, we didn't seal up uh, our boat very well where our uh, our VHF radio was and I think some water well obviously some water got in and it seems like it got in underneath this heat sink and actually when I took it apart I saw that where the power was connected here uh, there's a short circuit somewhere there's some fried uh, circuitry right around there and unfortunately this little 10 amp um, fuse didn't didn't uh, break Normally that's what would happen, you know, if you reach 10 amps that that would break and then, you know, it would stop the current from flowing. So my guess is that the current was flowing in between this, kind of shorting across the water that got inside here and not drawing 10 a enough amps to blow the fuse. So I was slow, we were slowly losing our battery power through uh, the short circuit, which was inside of this. And now this thing is pretty much trash because I'm not gonna try to repair all the circuit board on here. Uh, for 50 bucks, it's not worth my time. You taking a picture over there? Wow. Well, <laughs> we a are in the front. <laughs> so Sue and Larry are taking us over at Red Lobster. Hey, I'm Tiger Paul. 
Look at this epic meal. <laughs> Don't even have to go to the Bahamas and we have such wonderful seafood. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Cheers. It's non fattening, too. Well, good. <laughs> to new friends and good times. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.